session. Uh, I'm calling this deliberative session to order. Uh, I've invited Leah Kavanaugh and Julia Bradshaw, uh, who are both residents of Rollinsford and students at Marshall Middle School, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Quickly lose control of the delivery session. 
this. To a, there are some articles that cannot be amended. The articles that can be amended, uh, please write your proposed amendment. Um, um, Ms. Matthews at the back, who is the supervisor of the checklist, has paper for that purpose. Uh, and write down your amendment. Come to the to the uh, microphone and say, Mr. Moderator, I have an amendment. I'll come and get it from you and read the amendment, uh, and then uh, look for a second, and then allow me to address it uh, after that. There are some limitations under state law and court decisions about the extent that we can um, uh, make amendments. I know people sometimes say, oh, the deliberative session didn't do anything. Uh, it's actually, uh, there's a fair amount of law that goes into it. We'll try to make that as transparent as we can for you. Um, I'm only going to accept amendments to the second degree. Don't worry what that means now. That's focus, focus stuff. Um, most importantly, I hope you enjoyed today's meeting and walk away feeling that your time here is well spent. Uh, we're living in a democracy. Uh, it does not require us to agree about any article, warrant article, or amendment to the article. Um, as we discuss and debate warrant article, however, let's remember that uh, we're all neighbors and I hope friends uh, in this town. We have a lot of volunteers who are serving this town. Some of us, uh, when we're in opposition to the school board, need to remember that we also serve in volunteer positions in town and we want to give each other the respect uh, that goes with the hard work that people have done on our behalf. Um, but we're also uh, living in a democracy and we should celebrate our right to express ourselves. So uh, don't hesitate. Uh, please don't let any moderator's rules or ruling intimidate you into not sharing a concern or a question you have. Any questions before we go forward? All right, Articles 1 through 4. There is no discussion to be had on those because nominations are closed by statute and those articles will appear on the ballot of the town election as printed uh, in the warrant. Article 5 is the school district budget, and I'll read that article to you now. Article 5 to see if the Rollinsford School District will raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted in the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session. For the purposes set forth therein, totaling five million seven hundred nineteen thousand two hundred and fourteen dollars should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $5,635,723, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Rollinsford School District or by law, where the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, 13, Roman numeral 10, and Roman numeral 16 to take up the issue of the revised operating budget only. The Budget Committee and the School Board recommend the adoption of Article 5, and I'll recognize Mr. Wardway to make some introductory comments, and then Dr. Gomsky. Uh, thanks, Charlie. I, I wasn't sure how this was going to come across, so I just wanted to make a few comments about uh, the process that the Budget Committee uh, follows throughout the year and, and what's behind making a recommendation for the various articles. And I'll just say this one time, not, not go for, for every article, but um, organizationally we meet in, in early spring after the elections. Um, we elect the chair, appoint, appoint any vacancies that we have. Um, we have members, there are nine members who are at large, and then we have members from um, the select board, from the school board, and from the water, uh, the Rollinsford Water and Sewer District. So there's 12 members all together. Um, we then meet throughout the uh, throughout the year on a quarterly basis, and we review expenditures and we evaluate um, the expenditures in the, in the context of making the next budget. So if we see something that's off off track or something that is um, you know, that we need to make an amendment to the budget next year. Um, that's the kind of thing that we do for those periods, and then in the fall we do a um, we start having presentations from the various department heads, and we hear about their proposed budgets um, going forward from the fire chief, from the police chief, from the, um, the secretaries. Everybody in the town has a budget, and then we deliberate over those budgets. We decide to bring them to a public hearing, and then when we come to a public hearing, uh, the, the uh, 
budget is put forward, the articles put forward, and after that we meet and decide whether or not to uh, to recommend. So um, I just wanted to go through that process in case anybody wasn't familiar with what the budget committee does. That's what's behind our recommendations. That's pretty much all I have to Thanks. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight and being part of this very important process. So thank you very much for taking the time to do that. Just a few budget highlights um, this year, the revenues you can see uh, are down slightly. The $97,000 transfer, that's from the Warren articles that you approved last year. And then we had a, a decrease of $52,000 in state adequacy money, so our, our uh, revenues are down slightly. Our expenditures by themselves are only up about $19,000, um, but coupled with the loss of revenue, you can see that uh, it's about $169,000 or 3.52% uh, increase. The challenge whenever we're developing a budget is there are, there are, in a school budget, there are a number of contractual obligations that make it very difficult to, uh, to, to manage very tightly because they just keep increasing with health insurance and collective bargaining agreements and those things. You can see where the services, salaries, and benefits uh, take up approximately 97% of our budget. So the challenge always is what do we do with that other 3% to, to manage our budget, budget very tightly. Uh, you can see starting off on function 1100, regular education, the budget difference is down $51,000. A couple of highlights, we did increase one day a week for physical education. We wanted to increase the opportunities for our students for movement and health offerings. Uh, the health insurance is an increase of 4.5%. You'll see that throughout this budget. Uh, we were pretty pleased with a 4.5% with a increase. Some years it's been well into double digit increases. Dental insurance, again, throughout the budget, 3.9% uh, increase. The tuition for Marshwood is $11,304 per student. So we calculated that obviously out on the number of students that we anticipate uh, and budgeted accordingly. We've got an internet access decrease based on a, a new deal with wireless. Uh, and then some miscellaneous increases and decreases, software, equipment, and those types of things. Special education, you'll see, is an increase of $48,000. That's always a challenge because we take a snapshot in time of the students that we have presently in place and, and anticipate the, the needs and the services that those students will, will have for next year. Uh, and the special ed tuition increase based on current enrollment in any of the out of district placements that we have. Co curricular function, there's a slight decrease. Uh, this was on the current intramurals, the actuals. We looked at last year and this year and felt that we could offer the same offerings uh, with a slight decrease listed in the budget. Attendance contracted, that stayed static this year. Uh, that, that line is for any expenses that we might incur if we uh, are looking into truancy, residency, homeless is issues, those types of things. Um, and so it just gives us a little bit of a, a, a m amount of money there to do those things. Guidance services, no real changes there. You can see, again, health insurance, dental insurance, you'll see that throughout the budget and all of our staffing. Uh, and there was a, a new equipment decrease uh, on a something that was purchased in the current year. Uh, You'll see many times through this budget that there really aren't any increases or decreases. Nursing services are, are the same, $767 increase, and that's for the calibration of an audiometer. Uh, other than that, it's, it's uh, as I said, health and dental insurance increases. Speech services, uh, same as last year, slight decrease. There was a, a benefit change uh, for so that was that was demonstrated in the decrease in that area. Next is physical therapy, occupational therapy, and adaptive PE. Um, there's a $2,500 reduction. We've been keeping an eye on 
adaptive PE line. We reduced it a little bit last year because of the actuals over the last few years. Uh, again, keeping an eye on it, being responsible. Uh, we felt that we could cover those services at, at, uh, at a decrease. Uh, that's why you see a decrease of $2,500 in that area. Testing services, no change from last year. Uh, same services. Librarian services, you, you will see a $16,000 decrease. Some of that is benefits change, and some of it is decrease in furniture and software that we've purchased, uh, and basically based on the current need. Any place in the budget where we felt we could cover it and, and, and uh, either decrease or stay the same, we've done that. Next is the school board services, uh, $8,500 increase. Uh, there was an increase to the SAU assessment. There was a position of data management that was added in that area, um, and also a slight increase in school board secretary services. School administration, $11,000 increase. That, that is a 3% salary increase. Uh, three additional days for administrative assistant. Uh, there, there's uh, much more um, accountability and paperwork and things that are needed over the summer, so we added three days of services there. Uh, and then you can see the other areas that we've added, furniture, cabinets, uh, air conditioner, and uh, desk for the administrative assistant, those types of things to add to the $11,000 increase in that area. Property and liability insurance, uh, that's, that's just based on a uh, rate change for $514. Custodial services, a $12,000 increase. Uh, you can see the salary and benefits changes that, that made those adjustments. Uh, a lot of it was an increase in hours of the part-time custodian. As you can see, our, our facility looks fantastic. We've done a lot of work on it, and we want to keep it looking wonderful and, and not let it slide into disrepair. Uh, so the increased uh, hours there should assist with that. And also a, a lawnmower and a um, remote lift for the backboards here are also in that $12,000. Utilities, an increase of $3,200. Uh, we tried to go by actuals over the last few years, so uh, there was a, a slight increase for oil. Uh, and also there's an increase in water and sewer there. Uh, it's our understanding that there's anticipated rate increases from some projects and work that they're going to be doing. So we thought it was responsible to budget in $3,200 uh, for an increase to cover that. In the area of maintenance, there is a $125,000 increase. As you can see, the school board has gotten a lot done in this building over the last couple of years. Step, uh, going from the cupola to this gym floor that looks fantastic. We've got tiles that were replaced in the main floor downstairs uh, and also some out in this area up here. Uh, this is, uh, there's a large number that is, I think, $40,000 of that that's set aside for the replacement of the uh, pipe for the water on Locust Street. That project, we're told, it, when that's done, we'll have to replace the pipe going with the street into the building. Uh, and that's going to be, we, we've got a $40,000 marker in there for that. Uh, also in that uh, amount is uh, detailed plans for a ventilation system for the entire building. Um, some upgrades on safety and security, some magnetic locks for the doors, security in doors for here, here, and down at the end by the bathrooms there. So, People can use this facility, the gymnasium, without having access to the, the rest of the building. Um, smoke detectors, uh, replacement doors, ceiling fans. You can, you can see there are a large number of projects there, uh, both for the well-being of our students, safety and security, and, and maintenance of the building. Next is equipment maintenance. That's stayed the same for this year. A lot of those are uh, maintenance agreements and testing. You can see fire extinguishers, fire su suppression, um, permits, inspections, pest control, underground oil tank, uh, a lot of things that are just annual that we need to keep up on and, and have the inspection.
inspections done. Transportation is a $50,000 increase. That's from an existing uh, a, a contract with first student. We are entering the final year of that contract, so this next year we will be going out to bid again. Uh, and this is, uh, there's also a, an increase in the special education transportation based on the current enrollment. Function 2900, there's a decrease of $72,000 in that area. That's your retirement buyouts that were paid last year since those people have retired and, and the uh, benefits and, and retirement buyouts have been paid. That comes out of the budget for this year and also a change in uh, workman's compensation as a decrease in the actual rates there. Next is the transfer to food service. Uh, at the end of the year, the district is obligated to cover any uh, difference in food service to make that whole. Uh, and last, this past year, we were in the $12,000 to $15,000 range. So we thought it responsible to up that $3,000 to cover that. $52.51, your transfer to capital reserve. Those are the Warren articles you, you voted on last year. You saw the revenue in the beginning, you see the expense in here. Next is the default budget. If the, if the budget should happen to be voted down, the default budget goes into place and you can see a number of things. These are the things that would come out of that budget that would not be covered. Everything from field trips to furniture, utility costs, uh, the water uh, the, the water pipe from Locust Street, that project would not be in the budget. So obviously if that was needed to be done, it would have to come out of the, the budget uh, here at college for grade school, so that would be very difficult. You can see the other things that are not included in the fall. We're in discussion debate uh, and possible amendment on part five. as we can 
we're still playing a little bit of catch up uh, from the years when very little was done during the school year. We feel that we're nearing, I'm sort of looking at the rest of the board, but I think we feel that we're nearing a really good place. Uh, our facilities director uh, keeps an eye on everything. The annual maintenance is now uh, much more methodical than it ever was before. So we're getting to the point where hopefully we will be able to see uh, those things happen. Now, we, and sometimes you get caught off guard. I mean, we didn't know we were going to have to replace the water pipes, for instance coming in uh, from, from the Corley Street. So, but we knew in time to put it in the budget, and, and that's a very good thing. I hope that answers your question, and if not, the other board members may want to also jump in. So, you, do you actually have a yearly plan of projects that you're kind of working through with estimated costs? So, the question is, is there a yearly plan of projects? Yes. And, and we're trying to get more methodical about that plan. This year, as a matter of fact, just recently, um, we have uh, we appointed a school board member to work closely with um, the facilities director and the principal as they work through that plan, the superintendent, as they work through that plan. Um, so that the board can be more involved with that plan as it goes forward. So, yes. Yeah, 
Karen was saying that we also have it on our website, the SAU, the SAU 56 website, you can see how the tuition is calculated. Uh, My further question is, is it projected to increase continually or are we seeing an increase in students that drive some full cost? We have uh, seen increases per student each year. This coming year, the increase is the largest it has ever been. Uh, it was about $750 per student. Up until then, the largest increase per student was around $300. Um, so there, are incre there have been increases each year. One year it was almost flat, and it's based on a number of um, different criteria, which you can see if you look on the formula, either our website, uh, the SAD 56 website, or the uh, MSAT 35 website. It, it, it is based on the number of students. Um, our students that we send there, are in every, the number has stayed roughly the same within five to ten students. So. Um, I'm not sure if I can get into the specifics, but I'm wondering how many students are served, either a percentage or a total number, in our special ed or out of district placements, and how many are served in adaptive Is there information that can be shared regarding the special ed? I, I would ask Nancy and Rich, do you know the percentage of students that are in special ed? For uh, year or going on? Come on. I would say come on. Like one uh, if they can do it separately, that's fine. But if they can do it combined, that's fine too. Off the top of my head, I couldn't give you a percentage. And I can't give you actual numbers because we have to be careful about doing something that would ever identify students. Um, so, I mean, there are some at each level of schools. Yeah, Percentage-wise, I would estimate somewhere around 25%, but that's just an estimate off the top of my head. I'll just jump in and support that as well. It's, it's a complete estimate, but looking at budgets over the last um, seven or eight years that I've served on the board, doing rough figures, it come, especially ed, it comes out to roughly about 30% of our entire costs. So that's the cost. I'm looking at it cost wise from that. So. Um, in the budget the, um, for maintenance and improvements, there was a small air conditioner listed. And I'm wondering where that's going to be going and the reasoning behind purchasing the air conditioner. Question about the air conditioner? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's going in the main office because the, the employees in the main office work year round uh, and it's it's small, has one window, and is extremely hot in there. And we also have a server in the office that requires a certain temperature and we go above that temperature during the summertime at times. So the recommendation came from our technology director that we have a small air conditioner to ensure that <coughs> In case you can't hear that, it's because of the server and the technology in the office as well. In that same section, there was a um, notation that cubbies are going into the three, four classrooms in the hallway. I want to confirm that it's for the whole hallway up there and that we're not excluding the two, three classrooms. Well, the cubbies that are being installed, I see Mr. Parker nodding his head there for all classrooms on that floor. And then I was wondering if there is any um, data that you can share about the co-curricular activities. I saw that there was a decrease. Is it because there's a decrease in the number of participants? Do you said the activities seem to be the same? Question about the co-curricular activities? So that line is for intramural programs after school for students. Um, up until this year, the last two to three years, there haven't been any offerings that were offered a stipend to staff members. Um, this year, we've had a number of staff members step up and offer things for the beginning part of the year, and they'll be offering a few more as we go through the rest of the school year. So we based the reduction onto this year's actual numbers of offerings. Um, I believe we had eight or nine different intramural programs that are going to be offered by the time the school year is over and the amount that we've 
task force will cover all of those next year. I'll follow up question to that. Is that the co-curricular intramural programs are limited right now to the upper grades, four through six, from what I understand. But the REC has been very successful with a um, soccer group that's here usually on Tuesday nights getting 25 to 30 kids in. Is there any opportunity to open co-curricular activities to young children? Question regarding whether there are opportunities to open co-curricular activities to younger students. Um, yes, but again, the opportunities come on behalf of the staff members that are willing to offer those opportunities. Um, I can't speak to what grade levels the spring ones are for, uh, but there may be some opportunities coming down the line for our younger students. It's, it's completely up to staff members. I can't force them to offer any at all. They're, vol they're volunteering with a small stipend that we're offering them, but uh, yes, it is possible. And I'll do a little follow-up on that. Uh, the board is, of course, very grateful that staff members do step forward for a very small stipend to, to offer um, these after-school programs. Uh, being a former elementary, uh, primary, K-3 through physical education teacher, I will tell you that if you were one person and you will open it up to 25 kids to come in for soccer, you would not be getting much done. So um, the idea is to obviously offer things that are appropriate uh, for the right age and have the right number of staff available to provide it. So it's something that, um, again, the board is grateful that the staff does as much as it does and uh, anything they're willing to do for that very small stipend, we really appreciate it. For the discussion and debate on Article 5. find that debate on Article 5 is over. The budget as amended will be placed on the ballot. I'm sorry, the budget will be placed on the ballot. It hasn't been amended. I apologize. Article 6 relates to approving cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement between the Rollinsford School Board and the Rollinsford Education Association, which relate to increases in salaries and benefits. I'll read the article now. Article 6, to see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Rollinsford School Board and Rollinsford Education Association, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels over those paid in the prior fiscal year. And follows a table uh, for year 20, 2020, I'm sorry, for year 2020 through 2021. Um, Apparently, there's increased retirement and increase. There's a, long, a column for FICA and a column called total. Uh, for teachers, $29,397. Uh, FICA, $6,705 for a total of $36,102. Paraprofessionals, $22,496. FICA, $3,745 for a total of $26,241. For a total salary increase of $51,893, uh, FICA $10,450, and for a total uh, uh, cumulative amount $62,343. And furthermore, to raise and appropriate the sum of $62,343 for the upcoming fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries at FICA and retirement benefits required by the new agreement over those that would have been paid at the current staffing levels. Uh, this warrant article is recommended by the school board and the budget committee. I uh, invite the school board to discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This particular uh, collective bargaining agreement is a one year deal. Um, one of the goals, one of the main goals from the school board over the last couple of negotiating sessions was to uh, help our paraprofessionals uh, raise that pay a little bit, and I think that we've, we've done that. This collective bargaining agreement is, is a, a, a pretty basic agreement. It's, it's a 2% two, uh, 2 salary increase uh, for teachers and a step, a uh, 75 cent increase per step for paraprofessionals uh, with a tax impact of 21 cents. There were also some minor language changes and adjustments, no, no major things, uh, and some edits that were cleaned up along the way. Uh, uh, 
at this meeting may discuss and debate the article relating to cost items in the collective bargaining agreement under state statute. Um, this legislative body may not amend the article. There will be discussion and debate on Article 6. Ms. Leopold. I am just wondering if the school board has any indication about the parent teachers, if there will be any. I don't believe we've received any notification so far, and I believe the uh, date is We'd have to look at the contract to figure out what the date is, but we don't have any at the moment. Hi, Nancy Diane, 44 Rollins Road. On the total increase of the teacher salaries, I see there it's a 2% increase. Um, can you tell us, tell me how the rest of it is? Is it, long, is it longevity? Is it track changes for the salaries or steps? The, the total increase are this, any step increases they get a two percent salary increase uh, on each step. Can you tell me how many steps there were this year for, for next year? How many steps in the collective bargaining agreement? How many steps people are getting for next year? Well, they only get one step. So they're not getting the track changes, and they're not getting if they, longevity. If they have a track change, if they if they. Uh, receive more education, and, and they can also have a track change, but that's, that's by education, and if, they, if they achieve that. So there's no more longevity? Longevity is still there. So part of this is out of longevity as well, so the whole 29,000 is not just the 2%, it's longevity? That's all included.
chip away at some of the things that we, you know, had as goals, and, and the Paris, increasing the rates for the Paris was one. Um, one of the other goals, again, I'll just say it, we, we wanted to get an increased uh, give back from the teachers on health. Uh, but based on our negotiation this year, we weren't able to Follow up. So can you give us the current rates um, and maybe um, the data points of the town? Well, I can speak for you know, what the, the teachers, what the educators get. Uh, the single uh, rate is 92.5%, and the uh, two person family. 87.5. And yes, I will be wearing glasses next time I come here. Uh, I, I don't know what. But I don't know what. Did I answer your question? Um, so just the last follow up to that part of it is: Do you anticipate that will be like a discussion again next year? The question is: Do you anticipate to be a conversation next year? Yes, absolutely. And I think that um, we may this clear that this was something that was uh, part of our uh, and again this is something we've tried to work on virtually every year that I've been on the uh, um, negotiating but fortunately this year we were not able to accomplish that but that is something that we're really good about. Do you have another question? I'm afraid we can't give you comparative information as to the budget and they don't have Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion and debate on Article 6. Hearing none, I find the debate on Article 6 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 7 relates to raising and appropriating money to be added to the regular education expendable trust fund. <coughs> yes. Article 7, I'll read it now. To see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $23,000 to be added to the regular education expendable trust fund for regular education tuition previously established. This sum is to come from June 30. 2020 fund balance available for transfer on July 1st, 2020. No amount to be raised from taxation. The Budget Committee and the School Board recommend the adoption of Article 7. Dr. Kedonsky. See if I can break it. This article is uh, a safety net, if you will. When, when you've got a district that you're tuitioning students out, uh, it, it's, it's about $11,000 per student. So if you, if you get five students move in, it could be an additional $55,000 that is unbudgeted. So this just is the safety net. It allows us in the future to budget closer to our number of students with the safety net if we should get some move-ins unanticipated that we'd have that covered. Presently, we have $22,001 in, in that account. Uh, this, if it passes and we fund it in full, it would bring us up to $45,000, which is approximately four students. I believe the school board has said that they eventually would like to get to the point where they have five students in this capital reserve, which would allow us to budget that tuition number, that enrollment number. Just a quick aside, because I, I love to share these little anecdotes. We didn't have a tuition fund when we first started out. So the very first year, uh, when, uh, when we suddenly had like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 new students that were going to attend 7 through 12 move into town, we were unprepared. We ended up freezing our budget that year, um, uh, somewhere around October. The reason we have a tuition fund right now for us to have a, as a safety net is because Dr. Godowski mentioned it during his interviews here, that that might be a good idea, or that he worked at a school district that had a tuition fund. So even before he became an employee of SAU 56, he was giving us advice on how best to have a safety net here. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. 
uh, or in discussion and debate on Article 7. I was just wondering how many, uh, we discussed the first year, but how many have come um, on an average annually? That's how often have we tapped in. I'll answer that this way. I don't know how many we average annually, uh, but it, it's, a, it, it's, it's hard to predict. I've been in other districts where we lost three, four students annually of enrollment dip. And then I had one year where 14 kids moved in. Uh, and that's an awfully scary number when you're attaching $11,000 to each person. So um, it, it just allows the safety that you never know who's going to move in. Further discussion? Okay. Debate on Article 7. I find that the debate on Article 7 is over. The article will be placed on the ballot. Article 8 relates to raising and appropriating money to be added to the Rollinsburg School Building Capital Reserve Fund. And I'll read Article 8. To see if the Rollinsburg School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $75,000 to be added to the Rollinsburg School Building Improvement Capital Reserve Fund previously established. This sum is to come from June 30, 2020 fund balance available for transfer on July 1, 2020. No amount to be raised from taxation, the budget committee, and the school board recommend <coughs> adoption of Article 8. Uh, and I'll ask Dr. Kudowski to introduce Article 8 to us. This is a capital reserve for facilities. Uh, presently, we have $255,100 in that account. Uh, this is a, a, an example of, I, th I believe there was a question before about trying to get ahead of the ball game. Um, if we win, we have to do a roof, a new boiler, uh, heating and ventilation systems, those numbers add up quickly uh, a quarter of a million dollars and up. So this just uh, is, is creeping up on uh, being able to, again, have the safety net when something like that happens. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 8. So, is there an ideal number or a cap that the school board plans on having on this? Ms. Nelson. <coughs> um, we don't really have a cap at this point. We have some large things coming down the pike. Um, uh, the the uh, ventilation system, we're about to do a detailed study and plan for that. Uh, we have money in this year's budget, I should say, to, do, to try the next year's budget to try to get that plan put together so we will know how much it will really cost. If we go from the um, almost 10 year old, 7 or 8 year old study now, the IBEA study, that was about a $400,000 project. Um, beyond that, uh, there's a, probably going to have to be a boiler replacement. And beyond that, much further down the line, where, where, where we believe now we can truly plan for it by putting money in there is, is a new roof. And those are three to four hundred thousand dollar projects, probably at a minimum each. Uh, follow up question Is there, where is the list of projects that you're working on, and is it available to the public that we can access? It's also I, they, they will be available. Yeah, but, uh, as it gets worked on this year, uh, Tom is our representative with the building committee. Um, we'll uh, make sure that we get that out um, in either board, um, board minutes or, or out to the public in places where it can be seen. Further discussion and debate on board Article 8. I find that the debate on Article 8 is over. The article will be placed on the ballot. Article 9 relates to accepting the provisions of RSA 194 capital C to withdraw from SAU 56. I'll read Article 9 to you now. Article 9, to see if the Rollinsburg School District shall accept the provisions of RSA 194 C, providing for the withdrawal from a school administrative unit involving the school districts of Rollinsburg and Summersworth in accordance with the provisions of the proposed plan. A three-fifths majority ballot vote is required 
uh, and the school board recommends the adoption of Warrant Article 9, and I will be asking Dr. Kadamski to introduce the article to us. Just a, a brief history on this process. Uh, this process started well over a year ago. Uh, Summers were formed a withdrawal committee to pull out of uh, SAU 56, and Rollinsford felt that it was in your best interest to also do a withdrawal committee instead of reacting to a decision that Summersworth might make, uh, being proactive in a committee to, to look at all of the options. Uh, and having done that, the, both committees met, Summersworth and Rollinsford withdrawal committees have met, uh, and both have decided that it, the best way to do it is for Rollinsford to pull out and contracting the services back. Now what that does is, this was both recommended by the Rollinsford Withdrawal Committee and the Summersworth Withdrawal Committee and the Rollinsford School Board. Um, what this does is it allows you to, in the, in the short term, contract the services back, have uninterrupted service, uh, and the formula of calculation of expenses is, is the same formula. In the long term, it gives you the opportunity to uh, negotiate a different deal, do a self-standing uh, SAU, whatever you choose to do, but right now the recommendation is to, to uh, contract those services with summer school. Just looking at my notes to see if I missed it. And I mentioned that it was the same funding formula in its present. And if, if, it, if it should fail uh, and not get approved by Rollinsford, Summersworth has already reappointed their withdrawal committee. It times out after one year and it timed out in January. They've already reappointed their withdrawal committee for another year in, uh, in, in I guess, a safety net. Uh, if it fails in Rollinsford, then they will be moved forward in pulling out of SAE 56 like they originally did. Thank you, Dr. Kanowski. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 9. So just to be clear, so if it were to fail, summer's worth of virtual withdraw, then Rollinsford is left holding the bag, so to speak. So we're left then with all the expenses of the SAU and the summer's worth of the that correct? Um, yes and no. If summer's worth pulls out, uh, then yes, Rollinsford would assume SAU 56. Now, I would assume if you, if you take over SAU 56, it would look drastically different. Uh, at that point, it would be up to your board to uh, establish staff, establish a location. It would be SAU 56 in number, uh, but it would look drastically different. The discussion and debate on Article 10. I'm um, sorry, Article 9. Silly Leopold, can... Um, Somebody from the SAU or the school district, tell me what is the state um, role? Is, don't they have to give their blessing to resolve an SAU? And what is the timeline for that? Question about state uh, this has already gone to the State Board of Education. The, the State Board has approved the withdrawal plan already. What would happen from here, it goes to uh, the voters of Rollinsburg. If it should be successful, it goes back to the State Board, and then they would issue a number for your SAU to contract the services back. But the initial approval has already gone through the State Board. Um, we, have, we already have a tentative contract with Summersworth for the SAD services and we'll be able to retain the, the services of Dr. Gudomsky and um, the business administrator and the uh, special ed coordinator. That's a tentative contract assuming that it, it will only go into effect if we approve the withdrawal and I think that's important for us as a school district to know that then we will be getting you getting the same services that we're used to at the same formula that we have always had. And that's, uh, I really think that's a very important point on this. Um, should, should, it, should this article fail 
and summers were withdrawn, I believe we're back to square one with no contract with anyone. So uh, I think it's important that, that this uh, that, that, that that people try to understand that it is important that we do indeed uh, pass this article for our own safety. Um, a follow-up question. I heard Dr. Dukowski say that the um, formula would remain the same. Is that true of the SAU division of cost too, or just for services? The um, uh, the form the formula that has been used all along is the formula for SAU services. Um, it is a formula that Ronald Spring and Summers were as you have used for a number of years now. Um, I, I might even say it goes back to when we first joined the SAU, which was quite a while ago. Uh, there were more people in the SAU at that time, but uh, right now we're the only two remaining entities in the SAU at this moment. Um, so uh, it, it's always been a breakup, uh, and only for SAU services, if that was your question. And people who are interested in getting more information on this or to see the contract uh, that we have, it is available on the SAU website. So. Further discussion and debate on Ward Article 9? Seeing none, I find that the debate on Article 9 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 10 is... Not by petition. Article 10 relates to raising and appropriating a sum of money to send grade six students to Marshall Middle School starting in the 2021, I'm sorry, 2020 to 2021 school year. Uh, and I'll read Article 10. Article 10, to see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $326,650 to support the first year of sending grade six students to Marshall Middle School starting for the 2020 2021 school year. Every year thereafter, the appropriate amount will be placed into the operating budget. The budget committee and the school board do not recommend. Uh, and again, I'd be looking to Dr. Gadowski to introduce the board our ten for discussion. The thought for this Warren article actually started over a year ago. There was a petition warrant article, if you can remember, last year uh, to explore the possibility of sending uh, students to Marshwood in sixth grade. That's actually included in your tuition contract as it stands. It has been in your tuition contract. It's up to Rollinsford to decide uh, when and if you're going to spend, uh, send sixth graders over there. Uh, the board followed through this year in, in exploring all possibilities. Uh, we had a community forum, an informational forum, heard from the community. We had a panel of educators from Rollins for grade school, myself, as well as the superintendent and the principal of Marshwood Middle School here, telling you the pros and cons, and, and, and uh, my recommendation to the board and the public at that time was that you've got two great options here. It's great if they stay. You've got a great opportunity if they go. So at this particular time, you've got a wonderful uh, small school here. It's an opportunity for your students to be the, 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 the I call them the big dogs in the school. Uh, they get to be the most grown up and, and the most mature students and be able to see all of the benefits of that. Uh, I don't believe that there's a compelling reason to do this. The board felt the same, but they also felt a responsibility to the community because there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, inquiry about sending the sixth grade students. That's why you're seeing this Warren article in front of you for the community to decide, uh, and that's also why you see on the bottom of it that it's not recommended by the school board. Now, just to take you through some cost items, uh, there is a cost attached to this, and this is an annual cost. This is our snapshot projection of the cost for next year, but remember if this goes into effect, then something similar to this number annually is going to be placed in the budget as a uh, tuition expense. Now you've got your tuition rate with your number of students, and again we took this number of students that we know are in uh, school presently, as well as some students that, that we have heard from people that their students don't go to the school, but they would if they go to Marshall. So we added them in as well because we would have to pay for those. 
You see the base tuition of about $305,000. Special ed, again, is a snapshot in time. Those are the actuals on what we anticipate would be the needs of the students uh, for the total tuition cost of $363,000. Transportation costs in addition of a, of a loss of $71,000. Some have said that, that if you divide out our buses, it doesn't come to that. We're getting a really good deal from first student right now. Uh, we should be, I think it's five buses, and we've got three buses that are doing double routes. Um, so if we add another bus, it would be $71,000. So the total increase would be $435,000. We do anticipate that there would be some reductions. We wanted to, we wanted to show both sides of the scale. Uh, there would be a reduction of one classroom teacher and one paraprofessional. We thought that that was a reasonable reduction if those students left. So you can see the total reductions of about $108,000. So total cost, if this should pass, uh, it's $326,000 to send those students for one year, for next year. And then that would be uh, an annual cost, give or take, uh, according to the number of students. And this, uh, this article, as it stands, is an advisory warrant article. Ultimately, the school board would, would need to make the final decision whether those students would go. Discussion and debate on Warrant Article 10. So I just heard that this is an advisory warrant article. Is it by petition or is it put out by the select board or the school board? This is not a petition warrant article this year. It's put on by the board. The board does not recommend it. They put it on there because there was a, a, a request from the public after passing, and they thought that that was the, the reasonable thing to do in reaction to that, by letting the public know that they don't support this particular order. Um, my follow-up question is, is it in the budget, and could the budget committee speak to why they don't support it? Request for the budget committee to respond. On the advice that we that we had, um, as Dr. Palmsky mentioned, there wasn't kind of a clear pro or con, um, and so we looked at it purely as an added cost. I believe that was the, the rationale. I think it passed. You know, our our decision was unanimous. So um, that's what it came down to. So the budget committee would have to make a decision. Is this dollar amount, the $326,000, included in this proposed budget? No, the answer is no. It's a separate warrant article that would go into the budget starting next year's ballot, or next year's budget. This $326,000 is not in the proposed budget. Uh, if it should, if the warrant article should pass, then at that particular time, this $326,000 would be added to the proposed budget. And then in future budgets, that would just be included in the budget. So starting next year, we're either looking at an increase of $325,000 in the school budget or cuts to programs starting with 2021 COVID If this passes. If, if. If this passes, $326,000 will be added to that proposed budget. So the following year, the proposed budget will come to you with that included in it. Okay, thank you. Um, now, these are just details that I'm not sure have worked out, but have you, as a board, thought about reconfiguring classrooms since it's 5-6? Will the fifth grade be up by itself? Will it be a 4-5? And what is the timeline of informing students? Have they already been informed? Or are they going to find out in March that they are going to be going to March in September? Question about information on the students. Um, I guess I'll just keep repeating, the school board does not recommend that this passes. And one of the reasons we do not recommend it, uh, as well as the cost, um, which is $1.11 on the tax rate, as well as the cost, is, is, is 
is telling students and, and faculty and everyone else that in March that this is going to happen. We feel like that is a very short time to prepare um, a class um, to, to be heading on. They should be, they should be, uh, be able to relish their entire last year um, as an RGS student, uh, we believe. So, um, so it, again, it, it, we won't know until March. But we do not recommend, nor does the budget committee recommend that we do this at this time. There is no compelling need at this time. So, um, this is also actually answered one of my questions. The other question was, so, um, if you could just identify yourself. An example there for the future time. Um, so, this article is not advisory, is that correct? So, if it passes, is the school board bound to enter into this contract? This is an advisory article, so even if it passes, it still is up to the school board. Okay. I, I guess there's only a question if there's a dollar amount attached um, that it changed your payment. So, really, in the end, the school board is still going to decide, um, even if it got the numbers. I'll accept that as a comment. Thank you. Um, just one, sorry, one final question. Um, if everything passes, Question about the total tax impact if the budget plus all of the other word articles. Oh, oh, Further discussion on Article 10? Seeing none, I find that the debate on Article 10 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Uh, article 11 allows the meeting to transact any other business that may be to come before it. Um, and there really isn't much that can happen in the later session, but is there any other business? I uh, wanted to thank um, Judy Nelson, the school committee, uh, Jonathan Wardway, and the budget committee, the supervisors of the checklist, uh, uh, Superintendent Gadomski, and uh, Principal for all getting ready for this meeting. Um, and uh, I thank all of you for attending. Um, do we need help putting away chairs? Seconded. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment say aye. <coughs> those opposed? Okay. This deliberative session is in adjournment. Thank you.